Hey guys, JH, welcome to practice tea. Okay. <laughs> you probably get sick of hearing it guys, but boy, it's uh, it's just so windy here every day. Well, not every day, that's exaggeration, JH. But uh, it's windy. Okay, couple of things. Somebody asked me to explain parametric acceleration and it, and it was something that Yogi had more of than anybody else and that's why he could hit the ball as far as he did for such a small person and a relatively, you know, non-athletic strong person. He said by his own admission his hands were very weak uh, and he just didn't have a lot of, you know, what you would term you know, real strength athleticism but he hit the ball prodigious distances now parametric acceleration guys is when the the club head is going there and the handle is coming here Ooh. Ooh. you never want the handle going out to the ball ever the only thing you ever want going out to the ball is the club head that all you ever want going out to the golf ball but what we see a lot of times with players generally is front on they fire their hands out to the golf ball guys you fire the club out to the golf ball now the more you fire the club out to the golf ball or at the golf ball the more the handle will come this way and, and the more it will actually act as a what I call a speed pivot this here will just wow Wow, but if you move that pivot out there, there's no wow factor for the head. You, you move that, that pivot, like, look, look at that there, wow, wow, if I keep that there, club head's, uh, the handle's coming back this way, but if I move that pivot point, there is no pivot point speed accelerator mechanism, none. And of course, with, with Yogi's golf swing, I'm, this is, we're talking about channel lock here guys but what I'm doing is I'm integrating some of the good points of the Yogi mechanics and dynamics into to channel lock because I'm such a fan of Yogi and, and of course I want to unlock as much as I can of the mystery the mystery processes and mechanics that he had in his golf swing that created that huge speed and power no one ever beat him in a driving competition. No one ever hit it past him, ever. No one. Now, guys, Yogi clearly didn't have a method that you can learn. By, of course, by his own admission, and I heard him say this once in one of his exhibitions, and it's on YouTube, where he's hitting shots. He said, I don't know what I do. I don't know what I do. It's just a God-given talent, and I totally believe that. I know what he felt, and I know what he could do, but he could never explain it in terms of a mechanical process. It was a protocol, a movement protocol, a timing protocol, and an exact replication of the previous swing protocol. No question about that. And he got that better than anybody else. Mo Norman had it as well. But I think Yogi had it even better than Mo. So all we're trying to do, guys, is incorporate that into to channel lock. And what is that? Well, well that is that that once we're here, our first shot of the day, we just get on with the job. We just get on with the perfect golf shot. We just get on with the job. And why do we want to get on with the job? Because we don't want to have anything going around in our brain circuits that's going to create indecision. Now Yogi, probably from a very early age, one day got that feeling and he was able to corral that feeling into his golf swing because he because he never ever let it go he never second guessed that that feeling he took that feeling to the next day and the next thousand shots and the next million shots and he never went away from that and i'm saying not if you're not don't have to do yogi swing you don't have to do cl channel lock but what you must do is try and do exactly the same thing every time and what i just find guys is that if I get up to the golf ball 
address it and get on with it very quickly it tends to be exactly the same thing all the time but if I get in here like this get here and then something going on it's all over Rover it really is all over Rover because there's a second guess aspect coming in there so what I want to do I felt that 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 really nice process I've got the Yogi grip got the back ball position and I want to get on with it now that may look like a quick process and it is a quick process but I'll tell you what it's a quick consistent ball flight process now I'm warmed up after four shots it's never coming down get picked up on the airport radar here but those first three shots whereas they weren't timed perfect though they still would have been you know very close to the vicinity of the target that I was aiming at but the last one was just a bomb and that was only because I'm I was tight now guys even though I'm over here look at this this is still here and that club is still in this position it's still here it's still in front of me it's not over here and away from me which means that that lead shoulder has maintained the principle that we want it to maintain and that is that we want it to to be closed and blocked at address that's what I like when the clubs in here guys I don't want it over there you can let that you can let the weight move around onto the side onto the lead side to release the tension no trouble at all absolutely but we don't want to have a golf swing that looks like that I can't hit it better than that just hitting shots guys because I want to show you that the process is the same all the time it's the back ball position it's getting in position it's here yeah. and then it's the yogi load right see if we can super yogi load this I love the yogi grip so windy guys no surprises <laughs> I don't have an opportunity to think about anything other than the last shot or have an image or a feeling of the last shot I really don't guys same shot every time very tough conditions brutal crosshead wind perfect golf shot and that nearly blew my cap off so strong I get the same shape guy there's no difference in the shape none there and there's none here just there instinctively I'm trying to trying to just sort of really bore the ball into the wind okay so that's what I call a get on with it process now that'll be hard for people who are methodical and take time over the ball and need time to settle down well I don't think there's anything wrong with that guys but just make sure it's exactly the same amount of settling down time every single solitary shot now something with Yogi Lock with the driver because we're wanting to hit up with you we're wanting to hit up on the shot 
you've got to license guys to bring the ball up a little bit. It doesn't matter if the ball's up a little bit past the back foot, as long as the shoulders are closed when you hit the ball. I just find that when the ball is back, that it's easier to keep the shoulders closed. As it moves up, the shoulders want to go with it. So, but if you want to move the ball up a little bit, totally okay. Totally okay. The ball stays in the air a long time, guys, with um, uh, into the wind. Long time. So you can move it up a little bit. Yeah, no problem. Just stays in the air forever. And because I'm hitting up, I'm not taking the tee out. Really hitting up, guys. T came out of the ground, wow. All right. Whew. What else do we want? Okay, I think it was uh, Bob Cunningham asked about what's the wrist position if you're hitting up what does a wrist position look like at impact? Well, if you're hitting up, guys, it's going to look, if you hit this way, it's going to look like that. It's not going to look like that. It's going to look like that. So that we can get that, that, that trail hand firing past what we think is the front wrist. That's what we want to feel. So what, so what does it look like? looks like that. If I was hitting up, I'd look like that. Now the club is released, guys. See, it's here. I'm not hitting up like that. So the wrist is not like that. It's like that. Here. Club head is released as it has to. And that's what it... Uh, that, that's what it should... Um, that's just what it should look like. I'll try and hit one this way to give you a look at that wrist. really heating up. Boy, that's, uh, that wind is strong. So it's there. Okay, now the other thing, Mr. X has got something in his golf protocol, which is different to mine. I've got 
I've got very much a yogi hit up. He's got the complete opposite. Now this may suit some of you guys. His is entirely different to mine. And that is that he's here, but he's firing the club, which he mentioned the other day. He's firing it at the ball and down and into the ground. He's not thinking of the club going up. He's firing it at the ball, and if he could, it would go into the ground after the ball and disappear. That's what he's thinking. Now you can do that, guys, and it's a very effective way of hitting the ball. What happens when I do that? I get a much flatter flight. I don't get that towering height that I get off the yogi shot. I get a much flatter shot. But, but you guys can do that. No, no, nothing wrong with that at all. Now that's a really hard, flat flight. He said he feels like he's choking it off when he hits it. See, so it's that type of shot, it's like a, wow, I mean, it's just beautiful flight. But you might want to do that, guys. So what does it feel like? It feels like the club's going into the ground and then it's doing that. So it's a long stretch low after the ball. That's what it is. It's a long stretch low after the ball. Whereas mine is a hit and a, and a high continuation after I hit the golf ball. But not so with, uh, with Mr. X's action. Now, it's, it's, a, it's actually a great shot today in today's wind. Just fantastic. It feels more restricted for me because I'm used to having the club go up, but I'll try and do it with a little bit more, more um, uh, flow in the swing. Now that was hitting down, I got the best of both worlds there. I felt that it was down and then up, and I got the high flight but the boring flight. I call that a high bore. Guys, just, just a couple of variations. Don't, you don't have to be stuck, you know, totally tarred and feathered with one particular type of golf swing. You don't have to be like that. All right, this is, this is pure, pure yogi lock. A lot of lag. That's pure. See, I'm finished here, guys, still in front of me. And that's heating up. And it's brutal conditions today, so... And, and it really does work hard on your balance, because it wants to blow you over. That's what I like, when this hand's in front of my body. That means my shoulders are closed when I hit it. That was a little steep. Took nothing off it. Come on, James. That's it. I've got to get that back load, that back cock. I've got to get that, uh, that paintbrush, a big paintbrush at the top of the swing. And because I get quick, I tend to don't go take it back far enough to get that paintbrush load. So what I have to do is be cognizant of slowing the swing down so I can get the club to go back far enough. It's amazing guys, you do, I mean you really can't hit the ball offline. I could stay here all day, and hit, I promise you, I could hit a thousand shots. None is going over there. Not one. 
And this little corridor I've got here is about 20 yard wide corridor. Every one of those balls going in that corridor, even with that really hard wind. <clears throat> you know why? Because I'm just remembering the feeling of the last shot. I'm not trying to conjure up a new shot. I'm just remembering the last shot. Now that's maybe something that's important, guys. Just remember the last shot. Don't think about this shot. Remember the last one, providing it's a good one. But it should be good. That last one was good, so I remember it. That's the best one ever again. The best one ever since I've been on Channel Lock. And that's just that extra paintbrush load, guys. Just fantastic feeling. That's all I have to work on now, is getting the golf club going back that far. Get it back here so it automatically cocks back here so that when I turn, I'm turning against the weight of the golf club. If there is a secret in this in terms of timing, it's turning against the weight of that golf club while it's still going that way. This is five iron guys, that's gone three iron distance. And really, no exaggeration, that has gone, for me, that's gone three iron distance. Why? Because I just unleashed so much, so much extra load on the shot. Just ridiculous amount of load. Now, that's only because I'm, I'm just really rolling with the shot at the moment. Come on, Jage. See, even though I'm over here, guys, look, this is still in front of me. It's not over here. I'm not releasing the club around my body. Just keeping it in front of my lead shoulder. Sure, you can, you can let your weight get across. You don't have to keep it, keep it all back. I feel it's back when I hit it. At, at impact, I feel it's here, which is where I want it to be. Wow. As I said the other day, guys, for an old dude like me, I just love the extra zip I get out of this golf swing. And is it tiring? Well, it might be for other older guys my age, but, but I'm, you know, I work out every day, so I'm quite strong and reasonably fit. So I don't, you know, there's nothing in the golf swing that will ever tire me out. The golf, golf swing weighed 40 kilos, maybe, but not when it uh, weighs what it weighs. Come on. Come on, Jay. Now that's, that's interesting, I lost my footing a little bit there and I, and I just, just got my 5 o'clock nose going forward then so I've hit it about 4th groove, still gone perfectly straight and would have been on the front of the green. That's what I like about this golf swing. But I let the 5 o'clock nose just move forward a little bit. Okay JH. There, that's, <laughs> that's 4 o'clock nose. Wow. Okay, hitting a lot of shots, guys, but this is part of my practice session as well and, and how I'm embedding. This is what I do. Every one of those shots is a different target. Start a little bit right of where I... There's about eight targets out here that I can aim at. Don't just hit willy-nilly shots. I've got to try and get the ball onto the target. And it's hard because, you know, as you're addressing the ball, the wind changes on occasions and, uh, and you've got to make that adjustment while you're over the ball. Well, I hit this one a lot further, way over to the left. That's 40 yards left, but that's right on the target that I aimed at. Gee, that's long. Long for old JH. Wow. I noticed Bill Phillips said the other day that he's, <laughs> he's turbocharged his golf swing. Starting to rain, guys. Just one more. Come on. Perfect. All right, I'll just try and 
Okay, now that I've been hitting those quickly, I'll just slow everything down and try and get some nice, some nice, uh, some nice coarse um, tempo. Okay, try and hold this one, JH. No hole out there, but think you're going to hold it. That's the tempo I want to use in the golf course. Wow. And your days, guys, there'll be days when some things don't happen exactly as you want. And today, I haven't got my five o'clock nose where I want it for some reason. Don't know why. Still getting centered hits, but I just feel that it's just not there. Maybe because I'm concentrating so much on the back load. Come on. I had everything there. Wow. Wow. Okay, guys, long video, but just one of my practice sessions. And it's going to rain, so I, I, was, I wanted to get that in. Okay, guys, so just a bit of stuff then. We'll just reinforce every day. I hope I explained those, uh, those points there. I'll just hit one more with uh, Mr. X's down at the ball and through the ball. See how that's chopped off? But she has a good shot. Okay, guys, just a couple of different things today.